So before you get bogged down with the word left, I reckon it's worth establishing what the left actually are. And if you want to understand the British left, don't read Marx. They haven't understood it. To read Marx requires understanding that he's talking about evolving power dynamics and it requires reflection on power dynamics. They can't do that. Anybody who's telling you that Marx is their identity and they're that posh, ignore them. The best thing to watch to understand the British left is absolutely fabulous. And imagine it's Safi's kids, Adina's grandkids. Because what you're talking about is elite social closure two, three generations deep. And you're talking about a small culture of young people who have lived in complete isolation, but within elite structures which are linked to political and media institutions. And they have been raised to believe that political science means that all they've got to do is produce and reproduce their identity. And what they thought would happen is that the digital transition would mean that all the power that had gone through media would be theirs via chat room, and all they had to do was project their identity. So that's what they tried to do with the anti cuts movement. Now, it's important to say this is not just on Twitter. This is real-world political machinery. So this is my trade unions when we found out that our institutions were going to be undermining the rule of law. Who should have known this? PCS and Unison should both have understood what's in that first playlist. They do not, because they are left-wing tools. And they were there to preserve the narrative, the identity of this very small, distinctive culture. And now, luckily, because it's like blatant narcissistic abuse, and they've always had the ability to do this, they've done it quite openly, and they've reproduced the left wing identity. But it's important to understand that what they've shown that they've been really effective as is a, is a protective seal. Now, Netroots had people like Stella Creasy and Polly Toynbee speaking. The left were given license because the Labour Party needed a way to triangulate on austerity. And that's why they elevated Corbyn. What you see through what the cultures I outlined in the last videos amalgamated round, which is Corbynism, is, you know, them showing that they have been fulfilling this same function since 1983. And you can see the same cast of people in Cast Out in the Wilderness. When Ian Duncan Smith resigned, and that meant Universal Credit was done and dusted, Jeremy Corbyn didn't even notice. You can go and watch the Vice documentary. The last election, they upheld welfare cuts, so they have now said, this is how we uphold this consensus. But what they did not understand was that when you add a social dimension to political communication, and your political communication has been a narcissistic abuse, abuse reflex, I identify as, you then have to recreate narcissistic abusive relations around you, which is what they have done on Twitter, which is why they're a little boil. And because they're structured around the formation of um, a false identity to impose their own class identity onto actual political structures, and we already learned in the 20th century that if you don't reflect on power, you don't reflect on identity, abusive reflexes into you. That's the very core. They had never lived in this world. And all of a sudden they thought austerity was their way to do, to build, and what they've just demonstrated over eight years is how they would build a media landscape on the back of it, and how powerful that is. And they still believe this is about their interpersonal relationships, and don't realise that what they've done is kind of expose themselves in a bubble on a chat room and left themselves without function. Because you can't be the function to mediate discussion of inequality in a digital world where people can just bypass you. And so they're just caught in ever-decreasing circles. And so they're weaponising anti-Semitism at the minute because big Jewish conspiracies are preferable to saying we're a bunch of dossers at Oxford. But the same rules apply with the left. Everything they accuse everybody else of is just admission. It's just maladaptive shame. But the way that they had to do that on Twitter made them really dangerous. And I've had, you know, the list of things that I had to send to the Labour Party was disgusting. You know, I had major fucking... Mainstream editors deliberately put my daughter at risk of violence in a reflex response to protect Labour's identity because I was writing about austerity. Because what this has meant is that actually living with austerity and discussing this system failure is a threat to their identity. And much like TRAs attack women for being a threat to their identity, the left are dangerous to people who, you know. And so what they've turned Twitter into is an abusive shit show. But they're caught in a bubble now. And what they have shown is that they're very, very effective. You know, they create objects that they throw to the walls and they hold them up to the mob and that usually reproduces their own class structures at the middle of it. 
husband's health was really only the latest manifestation of that. But it's important to know that actually they had no reason to expect, like this is a massive change to Labour's environment. And what Tony Blair understood was that the left were their protective seal that protect, prevented Labour from adapting to the context changing around them. Well, they were consciously employed to do just that. To tell people that they identified as our representation and were allowed to abuse and intimidate. And if you read chapter 10, how the worst girl on top in Roads of Serfdom, it reads like it's written about the modern day life because it, that's the phenomena in its purest form a false identity, an elite culture with power who want to expand power using inequality. And all they've really managed to do is show that the legacy identity of the Labour Party is having a right to impose on direct democracy, trade unions and political party has left us without all three. And now they propose, they're posing a very direct risk to fascism because they identified as opposing austerity. So I probably thought it was quite important to place on record that their function had actually been to use intimidation and abuse to prevent discussion of austerity so they could reproduce their identity. And because they're trapped in circles, that's what they'll keep doing.